Welcome to a special baking session. I'm going to bake a cake to celebrate our Queen, Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. And I'm going to make a modified version of the spiced ginger bundt cake that I've made previously because I gather Her Majesty likes ginger. So I thought, well, since I like that ginger cake so much, and it's a, a sort of cake that I'm, you know, ginger, um, I remember as a kid having ginger biscuits, ginger cake, loving it all, um, stem ginger, all that sort of stuff. So I thought, I'm going to make a ginger cake for her platinum jubilee. So it's similar ish to the, the so like I say, the spiced. Uh, ginger bunt cake I make. I'm going to make it in a bunt tin, okay, and I've already buttered and floured that. And the reason I decided to make a bunt tin, uh, make it in a bunt tin, a bunt cake, because it will resemble a crown. Okay, I've changed slightly the recipe, okay. So I'm still starting uh, with obviously unsalted butter. I've got 250 grams of that, and that's going in the mixer. Uh, but this time, Instead of using light brown sugar, um, I want it a nice darker, richer colour cake. So I'm using dark brown sugar. Okay, big deal. Uh, 220 grams of that going in. And then what I'm going to do is just like last time, we're really going to put in the old beater. Hopefully, get it stick in there. Okay. Actually, I might just take the guard off before I start. Um, Put the beater in there and then we're just going to cream that together for about five minutes so that's creamed together so now in here we've got a uh, plain flour uh, i've got 470 grams plain flour i'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt uh, a teaspoon of baking powder um, a teaspoon of bicarb and i've then got three tablespoons ground ginger and what I'm just going to do I'm just going to give them a bit of a mix together and um, this all going to end up going in there together anyway okay and then what I've got here is some fresh ginger I've got about 50 grams of that okay and in that goes so there's a lot of ginger in this and um, actually well I've actually gone for more ginger than I did last time. I've probably put too much in, and I. But I like my ginger, and I'm hoping Her Majesty likes her ginger as much as I do. So that's all mixed in there, ready to go. Now this recipe calls for buttermilk. Okay. Now, you can't substitute ordinary milk for buttermilk because the buttermilk's acidic and without that extra acidity, if you just put all your milk in, uh, you'll, you won't get it to rise as much as you should do. So, although you can buy buttermilk quite easily, okay, I just come from Tesco, um, it's quite easy to make it. So, what I've got in here is 250 mils of ordinary milk and I've added a teaspoon of lemon lemon juice sorry and that wants to stand for about 15 minutes okay and there's a substitute buttermilk so if you can't get buttermilk make one so because I said I wanted quite a nice rich dark colour I'm using black treacle or dark treacle or whatever you want to call it okay and in there I've got 345 uh, grams and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one whole egg and I'm just going to whisk that in, mix that all in together. So I've got that egg all mixed in to the treacle. I used to like black treacle when I was a kid. My mum used to say that she remembered having black treacle when she was a kid. Um, so I'm using black treacle. You can if you want, just use all the golden syrup. And now all I'm going to do is I'm now just going to gradually add that in to the butter and sugar mix 
until that's all nicely mixed in together. So I've had a little scrape down, giving it a little bit more of a mix. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a third of the flour mix. And then we're just going to mix that in. And then I'm going to add about a third of that buttermilk. Actually, I'll probably add a half, about half of it. Dry it down a bit, make it a bit of a mess. And then when that's all nicely combined, I'll add another third of the flour, mix that a bit, add the remaining buttermilk, and then finish off by the remaining third of flour and getting it all nicely mixed together. So I've had a scrape down, and another little mix. And now what we're going to do is we're now just going to put that into the prepared bunt tin. Okay. The oven's on, it's um, up to 170. And we're going to bake that for around about 50 minutes. Okay. Obviously you want to keep checking on it, use a skewer. And until that skewer comes out nice and clean we just keep it in the oven now don't fill it more than about three quarters full because it's going to rise and what we don't want it doing obviously is going all over the top but i am going to put it on a baking tray just to whoops i just missed that um just to keep it on the safe side in case it does spill um and then once i've got all of that into that tin uh, even though this isn't a particularly intricate one now if you haven't got a bunt tin obviously you can't really make a, a crown um, we can. Um, you can do it in an ordinary tin um, ordinary you know round tin the only thing is you might need to extend the cooking time so I've given that a bit of a smooth off and so now all I'm going to do is it's not an intricate tin, but we want to get everything in, in all the nooks and crannies. So it's particularly important if it was a more intricate tin like this one. I'm not using that one, it's a bit too small. Right? So we just knock that down, and then, like I say, that is now going to go into the oven for about 50 minutes. So I'll catch you then. Okay, so it's had an hour cooking. Uh, actually it was a bit like that one cake last time and um, what we do is we just put it onto that wire rack there and we'll move that out there. and we let it cool for a minimum of 10 minutes maximum of 15 right and what will happen in that time it should shrink away from the sides and if we leave it any longer than that 15 minutes um what can happen is the sugars are going to start sort of caramelised, they're going to start being much more sticky and it'll stick to the outside of the pan. So we give it enough bit time to cool enough to shrink but not enough to then bond to the side. So set my timer and after that we will then tip it out onto our serving plate. Now this is a platinum jubilee and that doesn't look anything like platinum does it? So what I'm going to do I'm going to glaze or partly glaze it with a white sugar icing or sugar frosting if you're an American um, okay because platinum strictly speaking white it's more of a sort of a whitish silver metal color so I'm going to give it a, a, a white icing we'll make that later once the cake's cooled a bit and I'm gonna because it's a crown it needs some jewels so we're going to decorate it and I'm going to decorate it with some crystallized um, ginger and some glacé cherries okay but it's up to you what you want to do so we're just going to let that cool so that's had about 12 minutes i can see it shrunk away a little bit and here we go so plate on top and then obviously it's still quite warm so you need to be careful here flip it over i heard uh, a nice little plop if you like which, which is good and then let's see if we can 
lift that off. And there we go. There is a nicely released ginger crown. So all I'm going to do now is just let this cool a little bit more and then we'll, we'll start making up the icing or frosting to go on top. All right, so I've got 240 grams of icing sugar or powdered sugar if you want. Okay, um, I've got myself a whisk. Now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. And then what I've got here uh, three tablespoons of milk. So I'm going to start with that. I'm just going to get this all mixed in. And I don't want it, I'm not like doing a drizzle cake. So, oops, I'm getting icing sugar everywhere. Um, so I make, oh, I'm really making a mess. Um, so I'm probably going to add some more milk, okay. Um, it really just depends on how thick you like your icing, okay. Um, I want it runnier than this. So I'm just going to get some more milk, get that in there. And then when it's ready, we'll start decorating the cake. So I add an extra tablespoon of milk. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a spoon and I just want to drizzle some icing all around the top so it starts running down the sides. Okay, I'm not trying to completely coat the whole thing in icing. Um, I just want to give it a little bit of a sort of a coating if you like. So I'm just going to get that done and then we'll add our jewels. So like I said I've taken some stem, uh, crystallized ginger and I've cut that in half and all I'm going to do now is having sort of put it in quarters I'm just going to go around whoops a little bit sticky the cherries I'm now just going to alternate it around with some cherries uh, glacé cherries, half glacé cherries and fill in a few more crystallised gingers. So I'll show you when I've finished. So there we go. Here is our Jubilee Ginger Crown especially for Her Majesty the Queen on her Platinum Jubilee. I want to be trying that later. I think I might take a few photos first. So, I might let you see me taste it. So there you go. Much more like the sort of ginger cake, well in appearance, that I'm used to having. But let's have a bit. Still quite warm inside. Much different from the previous ginger cake I made. This one's a little bit more moist, I think. You definitely get a different flavour because of, I think, that dark treacle. I was going to say I wasn't quite getting the hit of ginger, but I am now. Remember, I put more ginger in this. Um, but again, it's not overpowering. I mean, if you don't like ginger, you won't like it, will you? But if you like ginger, you'll like it. Simple little frosting on top. Be wary though, the first thing you taste is if you eat that stem ginger first, that'll sort of zap your taste buds for a bit for ginger. You won't appreciate the cake so much. 
better finish this off. I can't leave any line around, can I? Wife might want it. So we're not getting a taste of this. Too good for her. There you go. For a raw harness, Queen Elizabeth on a Platinum Jubilee, Jubilee Ginger Crown.